Happy Sunday afternoon from Florida's Space Coast. We're at the Valiant Air Command Warbird Museum. Wanted to go to this museum for years. <laughs> we pass by it every time. And we're gonna go over to the space bar in a little bit to check out a SpaceX launch from the rooftop. But we had some time to kill, so we finally can check this museum out. Entryway. And we are inside. They gave us a listing of all of the planes that are here, the other vehicles. This is the Link trainer from the early 40s. Infantry helmets. Got a World War One helmet. Military typewriter. Machine guns. Here's the Red Baron, fame from Snoopy. Rittmeister Manfred von Richtenfen. And he's among an entire rogues gallery here of aces from prior wars. That's Charles Lindbergh, model of the Spirit of St. Louis. Of course, Lindbergh first aircraft across the Atlantic, but this propeller. By First Navy seaplane across the Atlantic. Yeah. Morse code train exactly machine. The Norden bomb site for accurate bombing. Flare guns. Women at war. It's still cold. Wind blowing through at that temperature. Uh, they said if a guy was wounded on board, you didn't bother putting a tourniquet on. The blood would freeze anyway. You can see our, again our two, uh, our two major bombers here, our B-17 and our B-24. Women Air Force Women Service pilots. Another myth is that Pappy Boynton, you remember him, Baba Black Sheep, got 28 kills. They start out claiming 26 kills, which is what um, uh, Eddie Rickenbacker got in World War One. What Joe Foss and Marine got in 44 days, he claimed 26 kills. Lived almost no time at all. The map of Pearl Harbor. Here, one of the interesting guys. Good looking fella here with his dapper mustaches. There's a lot of German Nazi paraphernalia here. From the war. We had a couple hundred thousand women in uniform. Uh, in all service, we're just in the same old barracks as all the men were. Um, did very, very well. We had a lot in industry, men of honor. And Flying fire. Tigers. Uh, it's pretty disgraceful. We showed up drunk in a lot of places. He ended up being a referee for professional wrestling. <laughs> um, yeah. Soap wraps. That soap is in World War II. Like early? Uh, Flying yeah. Tigers. Yeah, the Germans went I down love there. It. I didn't even know Americans were involved in World War Yeah, we flew out North Africa. Um, I was stationed over there doing surveillance in uh, stationed Kosovo, and I met the uh, air commander of it. Uh, the Tuskegee Air Airmen. Uh, he was an ace, Dave Campbell, an ace. Joe Foss, they show him. I got the. Uh, this wingtip is from a P 40 that was flown by them. Spear by aiming around. Uh, if you like a pie, he has solar stills. Uh, in, in that survival P47M fireball. And the radio airport got out with the Gibson girl, so called because a guy named Gibson designed ladies' gowns, and they were all like them. Here's a display of Japan from WW2. Kill Mockingbird and Cook Hawkeye. Got survival uh, kits here too. R2800. So the 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, and a water distillation kit. Uh, a little fishing uh, kit, too. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were oh, like a and a survival radio. Take it up uh, by a kite. Uh, 30 caliber training device. Here's a field telephone from World War II. 
Been on a river. Chaplains. Control center. Made it out to the airplanes. F9, F Panther. Look at all these old school radios. The old trainer. The Red Baron. Volker DRI. Now this aircraft had an engine. Look at this. Left. The whole engine turned. Not this is not a replica engine. The whole engine turned left. The crankshaft was fixed to the firewall. See, the engine was well. You know, I flared and run. That was one. Number two, didn't have a wing lift. Checking is six. Nobody even talked to a kid before. Put in case. Oh my god. The Tico Bell. And it is dripping. We're gonna be able to go in this plane. Are you freaking Which kidding me? She won't see on military C-47, but she had to build a bathroom. Oh, I was just gonna do huh. But if you'd like, you can walk up to the cockpit and you can take pictures. We only ask that you don't touch anything up there because we do fly this aircraft. Okay, that's amazing. Yep. And the jump cable above your head, this is original to the aircraft. This was utilized on uh, D-Day. Uh -huh. Oh, you're kidding me. Wow. Nice. Very nice. Wow. Is... Oh, my God. Look at that. Holy cow. We rent, the, we, we, we rent this out for parachute clubs. People jump out of this. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. This is, crazy. This is a T-16 Texas. Wow.
This is F-18 Hornet. This is the front end of a B-52. You see the name up on the cockpit says Captain Ray Shaw. Ray Shaw came through here about eight years ago, just like y'all on the tour. And he was listening to the tour guide say this is a B-52, it's a B model. It had a tail gunner way in the back. Let's try to find Ray gets just... up to this placard and says, is this the correct serial number for me? But you can go in. We can go over there too. There's two stations, two seats on the bottom. Down here on the left, you have the bombardier station on the left. You have the radar navigator station on the right. If you want, you can climb up that ladder, and when you get up the ladder, there's a platform. You can baby crawl to the pilot and co-pilot seat, and you can get down to the pilot and co-pilot seat. You can grab any stick, button, twist, uh -oh. anything you want. Especially the kids and grandkids. <laughs> Wow. This is a holy shit moment for sure. Wow. If you want to get over here, I'm literally sitting in the seat. I know. This is absolutely ridiculous. I have my back on, but. Mary's going up. Mary's all the way in the seat. Turn around. Look at this. No way. And there's another hanger here too. Hey. Look at this. Is that match? Yeah, this is like... Remarkable. Yeah. And next to the rescue copter is the ambulance. This is crazy. Wow. A lot of fighter jets in here. The door is locked. Oh, yeah. It's the POW MIA wall. Wow. Jet intake. I love it. Phantom 2. USS Kitty Hawk. There's more outside. Holy cow. Here's a couple of big boys. Well, the Warbird Museum was absolutely awesome and well worth the price. Staff there is phenomenal. We're on to our main event of the day, hopefully, Space Bar. Welcome to the Space Bar. Space Bar robot. NASA. T minus two hours to launch. And here we are. out of this world. So here's the menu. Not very robust, but enough to choose from. And they have signature cocktails also, as well as beers. And this is the view from the rooftop. You can see the vehicle assembly building out there. A little wobbly. There it is. Take a look out there. Mary got the drink of the month. We can't remember what the name is. 
and I went Diet Pepsi. Appetizers have arrived. Look at those deviled eggs. But more importantly, look at those nachos. What the heck? The food is delicious so far. I mean, what can you do with chips, but the braised short rib that's on them is absolutely delicious. So sweet, tender. It's not like just throwaway meat for nachos. And the deviled eggs are great. It's got a little bit of a cool kind of twist taste to it. It's got Dijon spiced um, egg yolks. But definitely bacon. a little bit more sweet in there. Yeah, the bacon is sweet. It's candied bacon. Well, the appetizer is delicious. It is like a thousand degrees out here though, so that is one thing for sure. These clouds, kind of ominous, but probably not going to interfere with the launch. VAB way back there. We have an hour and eight minutes to go before launch. About 40 minutes to launch and it is looking good. My main course, it's a TBT, which is basically roasted turkey, maple, bacon, tomato, arugula, and Alpine Swiss and Dijon mayo. And Mary went with fish tacos. Fucking tacos. Fish tacos. Oh. Looks good. I mean, I know it's just a turkey BLT, but it is delicious. And the tacos. So now with a half an hour to go, they've pushed the lift off another 15 minutes to 6.21 p.m. This is what happens when bonsai trees grow up. All right, T minus 10 minutes to go. Got a plane flying overhead here. Seven minutes to go. And the ultimate goal of this launch is to send communication satellites up into orbit for Indonesia. See visitors complex over there. And here's the sonic boom. Almost a full minute after the fact. Speed of sound, everybody. Smoke remnants. Mary's following along now on the phone. Elevator back on. Hatch closing complete. Initiate descent. This was really cool. Yeah. And this was non sponsored. Right. Right. People right. come and they were sponsored and had their stuff paid for. We paid for everything. Touchdown. This is Excellent air. experience. All right, so we're back home from Space Coast. The space bar was really kind of cool. Uh, there's a limited amount of spaces for you to go as a guest if you're not staying in the hotel. If you're staying in the hotel, you get priority access to the roof for the launches that are taking place. If not, it costs uh, 10 bucks a person to be able to get upstairs uh, to be able to even just stand. But we got there super early so we can get a table, get some food and stuff like that, be able to watch the launch. Luckily, the launch happened, so everything kind of Cinderella story happening there. Um, the Warbird Museum, super awesome also. The people that worked there, really enthusiastic, full of history and stories of uh, prior wars and the activity with the planes that they have there as well. Well worth the trip. Um, but we're going to get out of here. Thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great day. See you guys.